Unfortunately, there was no Zach Wheeler today. <laughs> Everybody. Welcome to Phillies and Steel Media. Today we're going to recap this afternoon's spring training game between the Philly Phillies and the Toronto Blue Jays as the Phillies and Blue Jays tie at two as this game was called uh, heading into the bottom of the sixth inning uh, because of a you know big storm in the Dunedin area. Now guys, before getting into this video, please subscribe if you have not yet. Please show the notification bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and let's get into this. This video is also brought to you by All Things Phillies. All Things Phillies provides a daily video of the highlights from the game. So please go subscribe to his channel. Link in the description section. Uh, so this was kind of an uneventful game here this afternoon. The offense actually was pretty decent this afternoon, but unfortunately the game was called uh, due to rain. Zach Wheeler did not uh, make the scheduled start this afternoon, uh, but he threw uh, you know 45 plus pitches this morning. Uh, according to Giant Manager Joe Girardi, he looked pretty good. Then he'll uh, you know start again on Thursday. Of course, the Phillies will not be there. Of course, it's going to be the day before opening day, which is on Friday. Uh, and then he will uh, be scheduled to start against the New York Mets on April 12th. Uh, so that's what manager Joe Girardi said. Uh, so no Zach Lear today, uh, which is, you know, I'm fine with. Which, you know, if I'm fine with, just as long as we can get him back by April 12th, that is that is okay. That is perfectly okay. Uh, and honestly, it's not the worst, right? And we didn't get to, get to play full game today, and that's perfectly fine. I mean, you still want to rest these guys up for uh, opening day. Of course, this is a shortened, you know, spring season. Uh, and, uh, of course, you want to have these guys get the reps in. But uh, it's not the worst thing in the world. As we pick up the scoring summary here in the top of the first inning, Nick Castiano singles on a line drive to left field. Uh, JT Mito and Bryce Harper come around two scores. The Phillies now lead it 2 to nothing. So, uh, Casti Bamos does it again, right? Uh, he. He's just, this is a guy that's going to hit a lot of line drives, as I always talk about whenever I bring him up. I mean, this is a guy, his exit view off the bat, unbelievable, right? A very violent one-handed finish. Uh, so uh, he's definitely going to be selling a lot of tickets this year. This is a guy that uh, is definitely going to put on a show at Citizens Bank Park. He hits the ball so hard. You know, you see it right there. Uh, yet again, another line drive single out to left field uh, to score Harp and JT. So 2 nothing Philadelphia. Then we pick it up here in the bottom of the first inning. The Blue Jays straight right back as Teoscar Hernandez. It's a sacrifice fly to center field. George Springer comes around to score. Uh, so it's now a 2 to one Ball games. So, Darius Hernandez definitely one of the Blue Jays' bright spots. And George Springer, uh, been a bit of a disappointment. Uh, been definitely, you know, a disappointment so far. I mean, he signed that big contract after he left the Astros after 2020. Uh, he was injured a lot last year for the Blue Jays. He wasn't really there. Uh, so, this is a big year for George Springer here in 2023. He looks to prove himself and uh, he looks to stay healthy. I mean, he's been pretty healthy so far this year. This is definitely a big year for George Springer. Uh, no question about that. He looks to live up to that contract he got. And the 2020-2021 offseason. So 2-1 to one fills. Let me pick it up here in the bottom fifth inning. Matt Chapman, new addition to the Toronto Blue Jays right after the lockout. Uh, getting traded over from the Oakland A's. As he was on a line drive to left field. His second in the spring. This was off of Christopher Sanchez. Uh, and the ball game is tied at two. So this is a guy that definitely has a great glove. And, you know, he's good on the offensive side as well. The Oakland Athletics, a team we're going to be facing on opening day next Friday. Definitely a team that had a fire sale. Right? They dealt that Olsen to the Atlanta Braves. I, mean, I completely forgot to talk about, because I've, you know, heard about him and as soon as it broke. But the Freddie Freeman, right, gone. You know, signs that deal with the Los Angeles Dodgers. That's where his offseason home is. So Freddie Freeman is out of the NL East, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give that a nice round of applause, right? I mean, it's a little bit late. I just can't believe I just haven't gotten to talk about it yet uh, for some apparent reason. I've just forgot to mention it. Atlanta Braves traded for Matt Olson from the Oakland A's and then they locked him up to that big extension. Uh, so Matt Olson, the future first baseman for the Atlanta Braves. Uh, so uh, they say goodbye to Freddie Freeman. They locked him up and traded for him before Freddie Freeman even signed the Dodgers. Uh, so the, it was pretty much that pretty much made an official end to a possible Freeman Braves reunion. Uh, that pretty much made it official. Uh, so uh, that was the end of that. So uh, that is your ball game. As the Phillies and Blue Jays tie at two uh, after the Chapman home run. 
Uh, so that was it. The game was called. You know, of course, they played up until the end of the tap of the sixth inning. Kyle Schwarber out of the leadoff spot collects another walk this afternoon as he also collects a knock. Uh, he's now batting 200 on the spring. His OPS now climbs to 735. Uh, so he looks a little bit better. Uh, I love the. I just love his ability to you know get on base. Right, this is going to be a great asset as the leadoff hitter. Uh, so uh, no question about that. JT Rimuto also scoring one of the field's runs today on the Nick Castellanos RBI single. Uh, so he uh, collects the knock. Uh, he's still having a pretty good spring. Right, hitting 310 with an 872 OPS. So she's still having a great spring. And Bryce Harper. Uh, also collecting a knock this afternoon, also scoring one of the Phil's two runs on that two RBI single by Nick Castellanos, uh, which you love to see. This is average now climbs to 346 here in the spring and 1,239 OPS. Uh, so he's definitely, you know, setting the world on fire. No question about that. This is the reigning NL MVP. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but Mike Schmidt, uh, they had a picture, you know, of him back when, you know, of course he won multiple of MVPs. Uh, and uh, they had a picture of him, uh, you know, standing by his trophy and with the picture behind him. And then they did it with Harp, right? You know, Harp standing next to his MVP award. Uh, so they kind of did a remake of that. I mean, that was just great, right? I love, love to see that. Uh, that was just so cool. Uh, you know, Philly's posted on their social media. Uh, definitely just gave me boost bumps. I mean, two legends. Uh, Bryce Harper, future Hall of Famer, probably a first battle Hall of Famer. Uh, he's, I mean, he's pretty much solidified. I mean, if you win more than one MVP, unless your name's Dale Murphy, unfortunately, Dale Murphy's not a Hall of Famer. It's really a shame. This is a guy that won two MVPs, uh, and he is not in the Hall of Fame. Uh, but usually, if you win multiple MVPs, you're pretty much guaranteed to make the Hall of Fame. Within reason, right? Of course, within reason. Uh, you know, Bryce Harper, you know, rest of his career, absolutely nothing. Thing, theoretically and you know he struck out almost every at bat and he had these you know horrible injuries I would say yeah pretty unlikely he still had a great career uh, but he's not there just yet I mean he's but you know but Jack should say of course he's, he's going to keep this up right he's a he's a he's an outstanding uh, player all the way around he's, he's just like this guy is just I, I tell you what I mean this guy he's just an on base machine 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 extra base hit machine 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 the slugging percentage unbelievable he led, led the league in OPS last year I mean Harper is just he fits right in here uh, you know just the backstory behind him it's is awesome. Uh, he just can go on and on and on about him. You know, underrated defender too. He's a very, very good right fielder. He's a very, very good right fielder. Uh, and the only reason why he got a bad rap as a defender is because he saw some time with the Nationals in 2018 his contract year in center field because Adam Eaton wasn't comfortable playing center field. So Harper had to go out there and play center field in his final year in Washington. Uh, and he was an epic disaster. Terrible, terrible center fielder. He's not a center fielder. Uh, they tried it out in his rookie year. He did find, uh, you know, in his you know 2012 and 2013, he played out there a little bit he was fine um, but uh, you know he's just not a center fielder and that's okay uh, but uh, I think he's under I think he's a very underrated defender you see the arm this is just in a definition of an elite all-around player uh, he's just unbelievable that's why he won uh, you know MVP twice in his career uh, so he's just had an outstanding career Nick Castellanos only one it was a big one a two RBI single on the line drive to left field uh, so uh, just that violent swing that violent swing which I just love 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 and uh, Dita Gregorius uh, also collecting a knock this afternoon as his average now climbs back up to 259 with an 829 OPS. I uh, understand the average isn't, you know, great. I mean, it's around you know, around 260 to 259. Uh, but Dino has really impressed me this spring. I mean, this is a guy that's also improved on the defensive side, working with the new, uh, you know, infield coach. Maybe I shouldn't even say new. The, the now returned uh, infield coach uh, Bobby Dickerson after he went uh, to San Diego Padres after the 2019 season, and uh, then he, you know, got fired. Then he came back uh, to his original job. Um, so it's great to have him back. And I think our defense, you know, all the way. I think our defense in the infield, which is the which is the biggest concern, also left field isn't great, but uh, you know, it's definitely going to give us some some more peace of mind. I understand defense is definitely going to be a problem. This team's already seen it. If you all remember, uh, in 2018, uh, our defense was absolutely terrible. Uh, a lot of it had to do with the fact that Reese Hoskins was out in left field that year. Uh, and Carl Santana, gold glove first baseman when we signed him from the Cleveland Indians, was not very good over at first base. He just didn't fit the team. Uh, I'm not even going to hear to even talk too much about that. Uh, but uh, we were terrible defensively in 2018. Roy Alfaro just couldn't he just couldn't handle it back there, right? I mean, he had a great arm. I mean, Roy Alfaro has a great arm. Uh, he couldn't handle it back there. I mean, that team was just not a very good uh, defensive you know, team right there. We're actually not bad in 2018 defensively. Let's not forget that. Uh, we were not a bad team defensively in 2019. Uh, I'm not going to go on a limb and say we were great, but we definitely improved, you know, from 2018. 
Um, so uh, hopefully we can kind of see that again here with Bobby Dickerson back. Gene Segura has not looked good so far this spring. He continues to put the ball in play, uh, but uh, average now sits at 185. It's only spring, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it's still, it's still kind of... Uh, Still kind of, you know, hate to see that. And uh, Alec Bum gets to start at first today, also collecting a knock. And, uh, he's actually been swinging a little bit better bat, right? And I understand that there's been some talk, and I just am totally against it with Alec Bum seeing some more time at first base. I mean, we all saw last year. We all saw it. He's no better at first. Maybe he's just, maybe just a little teeny tad better. It's, it's not enough. To, it's not enough to really significantly talk about. He's not a good defender all the way. He's not a good first baseman. He can't go hide him out in left field, especially now, uh, you know, obviously, since we now have, uh, you know, essentially two left fielders in Schwarber and Castellanos now on the team. Uh, but uh, this is a guy who's just not a good defender. So having him at first base, we all saw last year. He wasn't good at first base. Uh, you know, some routine, you know, throws right to him. He just drops him. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't understand that at all. Uh, how, uh, you know, some, you know, people can say, oh, well, I, I think he's fine at first base. He's not fine at first base. Uh, but uh, he collects a knock to Sandra. Not on mind it occasionally, but he's just not a good defender. He's just not a good defender. And uh, Matt Veerling continues to stay cold. Uh, you know, he's definitely not been, you know, looking so good over this past week. He definitely didn't have a good week, and it kind of hurt him a little bit. Average now drops to 194. Uh, so this is a typical of a young player like this. He's definitely cooled off. Uh, he's definitely cooled off. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Gary's Familia. Uh, you know, a nice solid inning today, uh, striking out too. He kind of had a rocky start when he first, you know, started in the spring, and but uh, he's definitely settled down since then. So Brad Hand able to work out of a jam this afternoon after allowing a hit in the walk. He gets out of it, uh, so that's clutch right there. That's very, very clutch. Uh, so luckily, we were able to see some highlights from the game from Broads Media. You know, thank you to the goat, right? You know, friend of the pod. I understand he has somebody do that for him, but that's great. I mean, he has a great operation. Uh, you know, I couldn't be more impressed with uh, Broads Media. Please go subscribe to his channel. He, he does great work. Four for four, Philly sport guy. He's a he's a real passionate Philadelphia guy. Also, Damon Jones this afternoon, a nice cleaning, striking out two. Uh, so you'd love to see that. Chris Sanchez allows the home run to Matt Chapman. Uh, but it's Matt Chapman, right? One of the best third basemen uh, in the game. So that is your ball game. As the Phillies and Blue Jays tie at two. Uh, pretty uneventful, to say the least. Uh, but the Phillies have their second to last game at home uh, tomorrow at Baycare Ballpark against the Detroit Tigers. As Meezy takes them out for Detroit, and Aaron Nola will take the ball for the Phillies on one of the eight ERA. Uh, if you did not hear, number three prospect in all baseball, Riley Green of the Detroit Tigers has a fractured foot. He's going to miss some time. He's going to miss some time. So no Valley Green tomorrow over on the Detroit Tigers. So that's not good for the game of baseball. The number three prospect in all of baseball uh, you know, with the fractured foot. Uh, so that's definitely unfortunate for Riley Green uh, and the Detroit Tigers. Uh, so that is pretty much it. I was disappointed we couldn't see Weir today, but at least he did throw 45 plus uh, this morning uh, in Clearwater. Uh, so uh, that was great. I mean, Joe Girardi was talking about that, and it's going to be great. We're going to most likely see him unless there's a setback, which hopefully there's not, on April 12th against the New York Mets, uh, which is great. I'll be going on April 11th. That's my first game. I'm looking forward to that 645, the first pitch on a Monday night. Uh, so that is my first game of the season. I can't wait to get back to the bank. It's been quite a while. I'd also like to thank those who uh, participated in the giveaway. I'll be announcing the winner of that momentarily, uh, you know, soon. Uh, so guys, thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Please turn on the notification bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video. Check out the social media link in the description section. At Philly Sandstill Media, Instagram, Facebook, Instagram. Follow me on Twitter at Pionstill Media. Call or text 267-225-3392. Email me, phillysandstillmedia at gmail.com. So one of five against the Detroit Tigers, Tamara Misa and Aaron Noah. So guys, thanks for watching. I'm Luke and I'll talk to you later. Let's go, Phil. So I'll see you later.